Is Aircrete the perfect building material? Before we dive into that, let's answer the question, exactly what is Aircrete? In this video, I'm gonna go over some of the properties, when to use Aircrete, when to not, not use Aircrete, and give you everything we can deep dive on Aircrete. Here we go. Aircrete is a building material that actually has been around for a long time. It's commonly known in the industry under several different names, including cellular concrete, lightweight concrete, foamcrete, low density concrete, and others. The term Aircrete was first coined by my father Hajar when he discovered it in 2015 and started working with it for his dome building projects. Since then, in the DIY world, Aircrete has been the common term that's used. Prior to Dome Gaia inventing the Dragon XL and our foam generators, Aircrete was exclusively used in large industrial commercial projects because the foam generators required to make it were large and very expensive. For the first time, the Dome Gaia foam generator has made Aircrete accessible to use on small construction projects and DIYers. This was a really exciting breakthrough for the use of Aircrete, and since then, it's exploded to all kinds of different applications. So Aircrete is a ceramic material made from Portland cement and a water-based foam. The foam can be generated from concentrated dish detergent or other specific foaming agents designed for Aircrete. As the cement cures and the foam dries, you're left with a small bubble matrix inside the cement. The shape of a bubble, basically a dome, is a strong shape. So the bubble matrix and the quality of the bubbles give you the strength of the Aircrete. The bubbles in the Aircrete also add insulation value. So one of the very unique properties of Aircrete over other building materials is that it has structural integrity and it can be used to build a structure and it also has insulation value all in one material. This greatly simplifies your building process as you're using one material for both structure and insulation. It's important to note that Aircrete is not as strong as traditional concrete. Concrete is cement with sand and rocks or other aggregates in it. Aircrete is cement with just air and bubbles. So it's definitely not as strong, but it has other unique properties and when it's used correctly and used with our whole building system, it's an amazing product. Some of the benefits of Aircrete and why people use it, one is it's really lightweight. So it's super easy to use. Anybody at any really ability level, whether you're a beginner or very experienced, it's just light. So moving it, stacking it, working with it is very easy. Also because it's light, it's really easy to cut and shape. So it's not important to be super precise. It's very different than typical masonry products like stacking bricks or cinder blocks that have to be very, very precise. There's not a lot of things that need to be precise about Aircrete. It can be cut with just general woodworking tools. So as you're building with it, this is just a big thing where you go, wow, this is just so easy compared to other materials. Aircrete is also very durable, so it won't rot, it won't rust, it's not eaten by insects, so it's very long lasting. One of the biggest downsides of Aircrete is that it is quite brittle. It doesn't have much tensile strength. This is true about concrete as well, but with concrete you can add rebar into it to give it the tensile strength. Aircrete is quite different, and we don't typically use rebar inside of Aircrete. What we do is we use fiberglass on the outsides of Aircrete to make it strong. So when Aircrete is combined with the full building system, it can be made incredibly strong, but it's still only appropriate for certain buildings. For example, you wouldn't use Aircrete to build the main structure for a multi-story building. Aircrete is perfect for domes and arches because the way the weight's distributed. One of the biggest questions we get about Aircrete and also domes is, are they appropriate for cold climates? We do a lot of building in the tropics, because why wouldn't you? But also cold climates are perfect for Aircrete. Aircrete does have insulation value, and that's the big question, how much? Insulation value is typically measured in R value. The general consensus around Aircrete, depending on your formula, it's gonna be somewhere between 1.8 and 2.2 per inch. Compared to traditional insulation products like, say, foam board, that's fairly low. But when you consider Aircrete is also your structural material, it's actually of pretty good insulation value. So if you make, say, a six inch thick wall, that's around 12 R per inch, which is very similar to a two by six wall with R20 fiberglass insulation. Because in a two by six wall, the fiberglass insulation may be R20, but the rest of the wall brings the R value down. So it's actually a little tricky when you're comparing the R value of Aircrete to other materials because you have to consider the entire building envelope. One thing to consider when you're building a dome in terms of R value is domes are very tight structures. They're very sealed. There's not a lot of air infiltration that happens with traditional building. Also, domes enclose the most amount of square footage with the least amount of headspace. So we're not wasting a lot of air at the top in the ceiling because there's no corners. So domes are generally quite efficient to heat and cool. 
And we've built domes as far north as Nova Scotia and other parts of North America. Our typical dome that we build during our workshops is a four inch thick wall. So that would have an insulation of around eight R, which doesn't sound that great. But in a 16 foot diameter dome, which ends up being around 250 square feet, it's actually surprisingly easy to heat this. They stay really, really warm quite easily. If you're building your own aircrete dome, of course you can go as thick as you want. Building with a six inch or eight inch block can actually be easier in some cases and adds a lot of extra R value. That is the next question, is how thick do you typically make an aircrete wall? And the answer kind of depends. When you're building domes, we start with four inches thick. That's typically what we build in tropical environments and with smaller domes in the 16 foot diameter. As you go bigger than that, we'd recommend using a six inch brick. Um, and the larger you go, technically, you just need a thicker brick. So if you're gonna be building, say, a 20 foot dome, you can still do that with a four inch thick brick but we'd recommend six to eight inches at that size to have the most integrity. When you're going bigger than 20 foot, we'd definitely be in the six to eight inches. If you wanna build a house that's super insulated, then you wanna be thinking around 12 inches for a great insulated wall using aircrete. Another thing to consider is that aircrete also has thermal mass, and this is another unusual property for an insulation product. Foam board has very little thermal mass, so in climates, where you have higher degrees of difference between hot and cold during the day, thermal mass can be very, very helpful as it evens out the temperature change. Thermal mass in the winter stores some of the heat during the day, releases it at night. In the winter, thermal mass will store some of the coolness at night and release it in the day, delaying the time that the building heats up inside. So the combination of thermal mass and insulation value is a perfect combination for any climate, again, that has a, a high degree of variability between the day and the night temperatures. So we've talked a little bit about domes. We've got lots of videos on building domes with aircrete, but there are other things you can do with it. For example, flip up walls. This is another thing we've done where you can pour aircrete on a horizontal form and then tilt it up into place after it cures. We've also had people build um, aircrete walls using slip forms, which is a form that's say about 12 inches thick, you fill it with aircrete and you slide it up the next day. And each day you pour about 12 inches thick and you slide it up. You can do other types of forms. What kind of additives can you put into aircrete? Should you add fiber? Should you add styrofoam? This is a good question and it just definitely depends on your use case. You can add fiber and you can add things like styrofoam and other things into aircrete to change its properties. Generally, the way we build at Dome Gaia with domes, we don't find that to be very practical. Adding fiber to aircrete will make it stronger, but it also makes it harder to work with, harder to cut, and harder, harder to shape. So while there are lots of additives and creative things you can do with aircrete, it's important to just think about what the benefits are and the trade-offs and see if it's appropriate for your situation. At Dome Gaia, we like to keep things simple. And basic aircrete is one of the simplest things you can make, and it makes for a great structure. When you combine it with the fiberglass and other layers, the whole thing is strong and solid, and there's really no need for additional additives. So we get a lot of questions on what kinds of things you can build with aircrete. Let's talk a little bit about what not to build with aircrete. Well, there are a lot of things you might be able to, but it's not always appropriate for every situation. So let's go over some examples. Septic tanks. People ask this question all the time. Can I make a septic tank out of aircrete? You might be able to, and you probably could, but there's not a lot of value, and I think it would be a lot of extra work that wouldn't pay off. Because a septic tank is underground, it does need to be quite strong because it has to resist the weight of the earth around it. The insulation of the aircrete also doesn't add any value to the septic tank. For, so for those reasons, I would not build a septic tank out of aircrete. Foundations, this is another question. While we have built some foundations out of aircrete and it can work in some cases, in general, we do not recommend building foundations out of aircrete. Countertops, so again, a countertop is something you could build out of aircrete, but I think in most cases it doesn't really make sense because you're gonna put a little extra work into making the aircrete and making it strong for the countertop. And in the end, there's just no real payoff. You're also not looking for insulation value in your countertop. So I think in this case, you'd be better off just using straight concrete for your countertop. One way to think about when to use aircrete and when not to use aircrete is, do you want insulation value? When you're building a wall, aircrete's perfect because you're getting insulation value and a structural component. But a lot of other things, the payoff isn't there. Some other th things that you might want to use with aircrete, for example, would be for a sculpture. So while there's a lot to explore here, you just have to think about the pros and cons for each application. But let's cover a couple common problems. 
One problem is air creek collapsing. This is when the foam collapses before the cement has time to set up. This could be due to a few issues. One of them can be the temperature. If it's really cold out, this can be a problem because it takes a lot longer for the cement to cure. One of the easiest ways to combat this is to use hot water with your cement and your foam and or cover it so that it's a little bit insulated and it has time to cure. The other thing that can cause collapsing if you're using dish detergent is if you have very hard water. This is water with high levels of calcium and magnesium. This can cause a problem. Most of the time, this is not, but we have seen some rare cases with very, very hard well water that had issues. The other issue you can have with aircrete is it just being very brittle and a little bit difficult to work with. When aircrete's made and used the next day, we often do this regularly, but it is very, very soft within the first day. Over the next several days, the aircrete bricks will get a lot harder, but you can use them if you're careful right away in less than 12 hours from them being poured. But for new people that are using what we call green aircrete, aircrete that hasn't fully cured, it can be a little shocking and people get worried. But again, if you're just careful or let the aircrete bricks cure for a couple days, it becomes much, much harder and easier to work with. Is aircrete the perfect building material? Well, I think you can see it depends on what you're doing. At Dome Gaia, with what we're doing, building our unique structures, domes, and arch buildings, we think aircrete is absolutely perfect. We've analyzed and used lots of different materials over the years, and Aircrete consistently scores the highest when it comes to value, durability, and longevity. At Domgaya, we've used and experimented with lots of different materials and different types of Aircrete. We feel Aircrete is one of the best value propositions when it comes to the cost, durability, longevity, and ease of use. Aircrete is something that you can use anywhere in the world, and anybody at any ability level can learn it. In comparison, if you were to study and learn how to build with traditional building methods, it's volumes and volumes of different types of materials, tools, and information that you would need to learn. Also, when you're building with the Dome Gaia building system and domes and arches, although it's a novel, kind of unique structure, the architectural and design principles around them are actually much simpler than traditional building that uses angles and squares and different support structures. So if you have any ideas of how to use Aircrete or what it's good for, what it's not good for, or experience any issues or have any questions, please leave a comment below. Thank you.